I think that's pretty good. Jacob, you all set? Yeah. Okay, ready? Go. Hi, I'm Sophie DeFreitas. This is Mark Hurley and Jacob Mudell, and we are the Number Crunchers. Our business concept is called Fast Snacks, and it'll be placed in the Sierra Train Post locations. So our idea is to sell energy feeling snacks to Sierra Trading Post consumers who enjoy camping, hiking, and other outdoor activities. One time that I know I would have really appreciated a fast snack is this summer, um, my cross country team, we were having a training camp and we hiked a mountain in New Hampshire and we got about halfway up the mountain and fatigue set in. So it would have been really nice to have had a bar or a piece of jerky or something like that that we could have gotten from fast snacks to fuel us for the rest of our hike. Now, I'm going to hand it off to Mark, who's going to talk about our product description. So we're focused on selling healthy, easily accessible snacks to eat on the go without preparation. So specifically, beef jerky, energy bars, and dried fruit. Our target market focuses not only on current Sierra Train Post customers, but also any outdoorsmen. However, we'll uh, talk more about this later. Uh, so, our plan is to sell our products from a kiosk inside Sierra Trading Post. So, after a, a customer has finished buying gear and apparel, they'll come over to us to grab a bite for their upcoming activity. So, up on the board, we have some of our suppliers we'll be buying our products from. Uh, now, Sophie will talk about our value proposition. So, for Sierra, it'll bring a stronger jump into the snack market to better compete with competitors. And for our customers, it will bring a more diversified and complete selection of snacks for outdoor activities. So looking at our results from our survey, one of the questions we asked was, when shopping for these snacks, what is most important to you? As you can see, healthy, how healthy the food is and how tasty the food is is two of the higher percentages that we noticed. So the brands that we will be buying from are guaranteed to be both healthy and tasty, so we are meeting this need of our consumers. Additionally, a question we asked was, when you do these outdoor activities, what type of food and snacks do you look for? And again, two of the higher percentages were healthy snacks, such as fruit and bars, and protein-filled snacks, such as protein bars and jerky, which our um, companies we'll be buying from, um, that is a priority of theirs, so we will be meeting this need. Now Jacob is going to talk about the benefit of TJX. So TJX will be benefiting from us because they can profit from our revenue. So first off, we will be leasing 10 square feet of space within their stores near the apparel section. And this will be $160 each month for uh, the 10 square feet. And this will increase by 2% every single year. Additionally, we will also be giving them 5% of our revenue for the total of all the years which after three years, we are estimating to be about $22,500. Other reasons why TJX will benefit is because keeping our kiosk in their store will keep the customers in the store for a longer period of time for them to shop. Also, we are helping TJX dive into the healthy snacks market, which Bloomberg is estimating to be worth $32.88 billion in 2025. Now I will turn it to Mark for target market numbers. So we constructed a inverted pyramid to project our target market. Um, at the top layer, we found the population of six towns that are all within 20 minutes of the Newton, Massachusetts location. We compiled uh, the population for each of these towns and we got our number. So next, we broke this number down by 48%, which is the proportion of Americans who do an outdoor recreation activity every year. Uh, next, we, for our, from our survey results, we determined that ages 15 to 24 is our main uh, age range. So we wrote down our number even more. And then finally, from the demand that we evaluated out of our survey, we determined that uh, we will have about 5,000 customers for, at startup. So now Jacob will talk about our industry data. So as you can see from this data, not only is the healthy snacks industry pretty significantly large, but it's also growing at an impressive rate. Uh, the dried fruit industry in 2018 alone had a revenue of $4 billion, and projected growth for uh, until 2024 is about 4.4%. Um, estimated industry size for jerky of 2019 is $1.4 billion, with estimated growth of 9%. And energy bar size of the industry 
for 2019 is estimated to be about $5.5 billion with growth of 7.18%. Now, I will take a look at some uh, graphs and slides that represent the market of the healthy snacks industries in America compared to other countries. As we can see in this slide, energy bars are most popular in America as well as Europe. Um, for now, we are only going to be focused in America, but this is just knowing that these types of foods are most popular in America. This is the meat snacks industry, mostly jerky, and then here's freeze-dried foods, which is growing mostly in America. When we take a look at competition, we're trying to have a better variety and be more convenient for providing energy snacks uh, compared to our competitors, which include REI, which is about a 23 minute drive away, Eastern Mountain Sports, Backcountry, Bass Pro Shop, which is a 30 minute drive, Cabela's, which is about a 37 minute drive, and Coleman. For our financials, we're estimating that after three years, our financials of revenue will be about $550,000. We got this number by taking our target market and then multiplying it by the estimated amount of times each person will come into the store and the estimated amount of money that they will spend at our store. Our expenses total will be just under $650,000. $150,000 of the expenses will be our startup expenses, which we will use a bank loan to cover 75,000 of it, and we will also be using um, additional capital from ourselves and family and friends to cover the rest. After removing the startup expenses, which we can cover for at the beginning, and then, and then subtracting the expenses from our total revenues, we will be able to get a net income of $24,742 after also taking into account the 5% revenue that we will be giving TJX. I will now pass it off to Mark, who will talk about SWOT analysis. So we, we put together a really brief and really premature analysis of our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. The reason we only have one item in each component is because we're still researching uh, more into each component, and so just to be, we want to be sure of each you know strength, weaknesses, etc. We, that we want to uh, that we have. And all right, so to start off, Sierra Trading Post is the largest outdoor recreational store in Newton. Um, there are very little, uh, little to no strong competitors in the area, and uh, there's a lot of potential for us to to dig deeper into the food and snack industry. Uh, far down the road, we might even look into creating our own brand uh, instead of relying on our suppliers. Uh, on the other hand, we uh, potentially, our data wasn't sufficient enough for us to really sponsor our idea, and so we don't really think it really uh, accurately represents our target market. Uh, and finally, uh, there's a lot of online larger competition. Okay, that's it. Questions for the team? I have one question. Oh, oh. Without much of an online presence, how do you plan to deal with Sierra's low uh, presence, in, just in terms of stores nationally? Yeah, so, um, so like, you know, we have, there's Amazon's probably our biggest competitor online, but again, like TJX and Sierra Trading Post does focus on the uh, in-store experience and the low cost and low prices, so, uh, our products, likewise, will have low prices, and so this is how we'll attract the consumer base. Um, earlier you said that Sierra Trading Post will be located in the apparel section. Can you elaborate on that? Well, not in okay. the apparel section, just next to the apparel section. As Mark elaborated at the beginning, we want people to, when they get the idea of what supplies they need for their hiking experience, to then be able to gather what they need, have, like, say, if they're buying a bag, buy that bag, and then be in that same area when they exit the area where they're buying their gear, that's when they see our kiosk of food so that they now understand, all right, maybe this is how much of the goods I'm carrying, now let's see what food I can bring and how it can be stored in what I'm having, in what I'm bringing. You have questions on It was just gonna be like, you said 10 square feet, you guys are gonna start off. Yeah, just for- gonna be like a table with some um, or starting off as a kiosk. So it's essentially like if you imagine what a kiosk is in like a mall, that's kind of what we're starting off with. And then just the space around it. Okay, good, thank you.